scripture reading for today is Genesis 12, 1 through 4. The Lord said to Abram, leave your land, your family, and your father's household for the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation and will bless you. I will make your name respected and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. Those who curse you, I will curse. All the families of the earth will be blessed because of you. Abram left just as the Lord told him, and Lot went with him. Now Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. I can imagine Abraham and Sarah as a nice, retired, married couple who lived in their own home their entire life. Their family was close by. The land they owned had been in their family for generations. They were not expecting any new changes to take place in their life. They would live out their last days until God called them home. How many of you here this morning can identify with the beginning of the story? God calls Abraham and Sarah to leave all that was familiar to them and set out on a journey with God to an unfamiliar land. Like Abraham and Sarah, your community has been called by God to be a part of your congregation's search to find a new minister. A lot that may have been familiar to you has changed. And I am sure at times you felt as if you were venturing into unfamiliar territory. You have had to practice all of the Christian disciplines that you have learned over the years, such as prayer and discernment, to understand where is it that God is taking us. When I think about the journey of faith that we all embark on, one of the images that speaks to me the most is the ancient labyrinth. In your handout, you have a, a task to the bullet in the handout of the labyrinth, and that's used as an illustration to help you think about how the labyrinth might apply to you in your own spiritual lives. It is a circular maze that you can walk on, and the point of the maze is to find your way to the center of the labyrinth. The truth that the labyrinth articulates is that God is always calling us into unfamiliar territory and always has new things in store for us. I know that this is the time of year for summer vacations, and I'm sure many of you have returned from vacation or are still planning your vacation. When you plan for your vacation, I'm sure that most of us plan the trip out with GPS or a map. And we check our vehicles to make sure that they're up for the journey. We also check to ensure that we have all of the necessities for the trip. I cannot imagine that Abraham and Sarah had that kind of time to plan their journey with God. Within their primitive culture, I don't think they would have been able to have taken much with them. When the search committee first called me to come and visit for my first visit to both Whiting and Sioux City, I spent the day before my departure preparing for the trip. As I was driving up I-29, I dozed off and missed the 120 exit for Whiting. The funny thing about this is that I had my GPS going the whole time during the trip. After I missed the exit, I saw no safe way to safely turn around on I-29, so I drove seven more miles on, on up to Sloan, where my GPS was telling me to go. Once I got to Sloan, my GPS took me down a two-lane highway that was supposed to take me back to Whiting. However, the highway was closed for construction. <laughs> I then turned around and drove until I saw a gravel road headed in the same direction. Now, as many of you know, if you use a GPS while traveling, you have to drive a ways away 
from where you are so that the GPS will give you an alternate route. Otherwise, it will keep directing you to the road that's closed under construction because it does not recognize the fact that the road is no longer drivable. You can see from the story of my own journey that even when you think you are prepared for the road ahead of you, there can always be unexpected detours. We may not always know at first where it is that God is calling us and what the journey will be like. However, there is one thing that we should all have for the journey ahead of us, and that is a vision. Abraham and Sarah did not know exactly how the journey ahead of them would unfold. However, they did have the vision given to them by God, pointing toward what the meaning of their journey was all about. Abraham and Sarah, Abraham would be the father and Sarah would be the mother of many nations. God would bless them and they in turn would be a blessing to many others. This morning as we begin a new journey together towards a new beginning, I would like to invite this congregation to begin to think about what your vision is for the future of Mayflower Congregational United Church of Christ in Sioux City, Iowa. What kind of vision has God given to you, to this congregation? A vision for the future is essential of any congregation. The ancient prophet of the Hebrew Bible proclaims to us that without a vision, the people perish. UCC pastor Anthony B. Robinson in his book, Changing the Conversation, A Third Way for Congregation, Congregation, says that every vision must begin with a purpose. In many ways, he says that purpose is more important than the vision itself. Why am I here? Why are you here? What is our story? Abraham and Sarah discovered within the vision given to them by God that God blessed them to be a blessing for others. I think that is one of the essential purposes a vision statement should have. And I think it should be included as part of the purpose of our vision statement for the future of this congregation moving forward. God has called us to bless others with the blessings that God has given us. It is a reminder to us that it all belongs to God, and God wants us to use what we have to transform the lives of others into being what God has created them to be, which is the loved children of God, made in the image of God. Our primary purpose is always to transform the lives of people for God's kingdom. Those on the search committee know I love history. And I think that knowing and understanding our history can be another kind of guide in discerning what the future has in store for us. My pastor once gave me this advice for when I would eventually receive my call to a church, my first church. He told me, read the history of the congregation. It will tell you a lot about who they are and where they will possibly go into the future. Remembering the stories of our ancestors can give us much invaluable wisdom <coughs> for the journey ahead of us. When I visited First Congregational in Whiting, I was given this book entitled Recipes and Reflections. It tells the history of their congregation going back to 1892. And it also has some wonderful recipes for church dinners. When I first showed this to my mother, she fell in love with this book instantly. During my visit with Mayflower, I got to see all of the black and white framed pictures back in your fellowship hall that shows the congregation going back to the 1920s. That too also told me a lot about your history. 
I'm sure you are all well aware of the fascination that people have with Ancestry.com. I think that fascination comes from a sense of wanting to be grounded in an identity. So many people don't know who they are. They are looking for a sense of identity. Who am I? My family, the Lake family, originated from Germany. My Aunt Betty put together a scrapbook detailing all that she had discovered about how the links came from Germany to the United States. Now they found or made a home here and established themselves as farmers. My Aunt Barb works for a lab company that makes the DNA spit test. That will tell you the percentages of all of the ancestries that you could possibly that you have in your DNA. When my cousin took the test, it kept, came back saying that he was part Neanderthal. <laughs> I haven't taken the spit test yet, but at some point, it would be interesting to see what my DNA will say about all of the ancestries that I may not even have known about. Abraham and Sarah are the earliest ancestors we have in the Christian faith. They really model the journey for all of what God is doing throughout Scripture. Through them, God builds God's first community in order to restore God's creation from all of the trouble that humanity had gotten itself into. And God made a covenant with them. It was a new beginning for God and for all of humanity. As we move forward into this new journey that God has in store for us, I would be honored to be a travel companion with you along the way, helping you to navigate the road which is ahead of us. <laughs>